Thank you for tuning in today. Today we will review VORs and the reverse sensing that can happen when tracking VOR radials. Suppose we are tracking a VOR and are flying on a course tracking the 309 degree radial of a VOR. Our heading indicator would appear as shown in the top right and the CDI would appear as shown in the bottom left. Since we are flying a heading of 309 degrees, that would be our front course. The back course would be the 180 degree reciprocal of 309, which is 129 degrees. Our OBS knob is turned to a heading of 309 degrees, which is our intended course. If we fly off course to the right, the OBS knob needle will deflect to the left and we need to fly back to the left towards the needle to get back on course. If we fly off course to the left, the OBS knob needle will deflect to the right, and we need to fly back to the right towards the needle to get back on course. Let's see what happens when we turn the OBS knob to the back course of 129 degrees. You can see the CDI needle is centered on a heading of 129 degrees. Notice how our CDI needle is centered when we turn the OBS knob to a heading of 129 degrees. The two from indicator flag shows a two indication when the OBS knob is turned to a heading of 129 degrees and our aircraft is positioned as shown to the northwest of the VOR. If we didn't adjust the OBS to our front course of 309 degrees, then reverse sensing occurs, meaning we would need to fly away from the needle to stay on our intended course. If we turned our OBS knob to the front course of 309 degrees and were positioned to the southeast of the VOR as shown, then we would fly towards the needle to get back on our intended course. This is why it is important to set the OBS knob on the intended course because reverse sensing has the tendency to confuse pilots and there is a possibility of drifting further off course. Suppose we were positioned to the northwest of the VOR as shown but had the CDI needle turned to a heading of 129 degrees. Once we fly over the VOR, we are still on a course of 309 degrees but now the 2 from indicator flag shows a 2 indication when the OBS knob is turned to a heading of 129 degrees. Reverse sensing would also occur in this situation, meaning if we flew to the right, the CDI needle would deflect to the right, and we would need to fly to the left away from the needle to get back on the intended course. Conversely, if we flew to the left, the CDI needle would deflect to the left and we would need to fly to the right, away from the needle to get back on course. This is the reverse sensing phenomenon that can occur in VOR navigation. We want to illustrate the reverse sensing that can happen in VOR navigation to make pilots aware since there are still a few localizer back course approaches at some airports in the U.S. For instance, John Wayne Orange County Airport in Santa Ana, California has a localizer back course approach to runway 2 left. The approach course is 016 degrees but the reverse sensing phenomenon would occur on this approach since it is a localizer back course approach. That is why it's a good idea for pilots to become familiar with front and back courses with regards to VOR navigation. Fortunately, advanced avionics systems such as the Garmin G1000 have a back course mode so pilots do not get confused when flying localizer back course approaches. Thank you for watching the video. Please like the video and subscribe for more flight training and aviation related educational videos.